You know what brain freeze is, don't you? <sighs> Here we go. It's when you sip something so cold, so it permeates the roof of your mouth and freezes the synapses in your brain, so your memories are literally frozen in place. This is not literally or even figuratively true. Brain freeze, or a cold stimulus headache, has nothing to do with memory and everything to do with the pain receptors being exposed to extreme swings in temperature. I understand that Foki here is using brain freeze as a metaphor for what she's doing to poor Hunter C20 here, but if you're going for a metaphor, why not use deja vu? Now, why did I come into the kitchen again? Okay, ask. How many people are guarding the timekeepers? Sorry, what? See, if you'd gone with deja vu, this might have worked. This futuristic grocery store has security cameras that track plot-related people through the parking lot. Amazing! Total bull****, but amazing. Which is more of a sin, the sudden and convenient timing of Foki's time door, or that she's more interested in a top bun rather than concealing herself with her hood as she has been doing before her reveal last episode. Oh, you're right, it's both. You do realize that there are other available options on the spectrum between incapacitation through magical means and murder by disintegration? Just a thought. But why not carry the very important weapon with you if you know your powers won't work? Why is no one picking up the Wuxia Wei Rod? Stop. I'm all for the bad guy killing the good guys, but come on. Did no one train to use these light-up sticks? She had a sword the whole time? You're in my way. Only because you walked away from the elevators, which was a really odd choice given the situation. But now I see you lack vision. Well, technically, this whole show lacks vision. Wait, was that even meant to be... Damn it, I'm so used to Marvel pummeling my little fan person brain with Easter eggs that I have no idea if this is supposed to be a reference to THE Vision or not. Ten cents for once again making me question the very fabric of my reality. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is not the even standoff it's framed to be. Sylvie has a sword, while Loki has a fist. Two fists at most. Goodbye, variant. Which moron designed this device? My phone leaves me in a state of low battery panic for at least three anxiety riddled hours before it finally dies, and I'm not depending on it for any form of chronometric escapism. Also, shouldn't this device give you plenty of notice before it runs out of juice? Or, better yet, prevent you from making an outbound trip to whenever the f if it doesn't have enough power to get you back home? Being stranded some when in a timeline you're supposed to be protecting seems like a guaranteed way to make sure your parents never get together at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Well, with a name like that, you're just asking for an apocalyptic event. Of all of the apocalypses saved on that tent pad, this is the worst! No one makes it off here! Isn't that the point? Wasn't the whole idea of hiding in apocalypses because there wouldn't be any survivors and therefore no chance of her creating any disturbances in the time force or whatever it is? Is Sylvie saying that she has apocalypses saved in there that do have survivors? That makes none of the sense! I suppose now is a good time to point out that these two untrusting foes were trying to kill each other a few moments ago and suddenly our Loki is totally fine with Foki getting this close and touching his face without any struggle. Fine. <laughs> what exactly is causing Loki's daggers to make this shinging sound? It's not like he's unsheathing them. Doesn't he just make them disappear and then reappear? I suppose he could be using a minor illusion spell, but that seems a bit cantropy for Loki. I know, a truce. <laughs> See, a warp I can get on board with, but not a shing. The plan you interrupted was years in the making. Years. Was it? I mean, how has Sylvie been able to measure that? And if that tornado in Oklahoma was her base of operations, how was she able to spend years there without, I don't know, bumping into herself? There's power somewhere on this moon. We just need enough of it to travel through interdimensional time and space. Where the hell are you gonna find 1.21 gigawatts at this hour? Just because I have to work with you doesn't mean I wanna hear your voice. TV sins writers wanna ask them for feedback on my narration. So let's talk about the villain's plan. Your years in the making plan was to tear the place down, create the ultimate power vacuum, and then just walk away. Uh, thanks Loki, you'd be great at TV sins, but I swear to Odin, if you interrupt me one more time. I'm just checking the coupling making sure it can connect. The pain Apple deliberately puts its users through every damn day. There's a reason their logo is an apple with a bite out of it. Here's a confusing part of the story where Loki and Foki go into a tiny house to find a massive power source. Brute force is no substitute for diplomacy and guile. It, it's been a long time. This is what you call diplomacy? I guess the Asgardian definition strays far more into the manipulative asshole variation. Hello, dear. Patrice? 
I know how the disguise spell works, and sure, he may look like Patrice on the outside, but there's no way to nail the voice unless you have the actor feed and have heard it before. This must be the calmest apocalypse to have ever apocalypsed. Is it too much to ask for a bit of looting, or at least an unruly mob? Also, I'm calling shenanigans that anything resembling an orderly line would be maintained here. This is the end of the f***ing world! People don't wait in line like this for Disneyland, let alone their only possible salvation from the coming apocalypse. Also, also, no one seems to give a damn that Loki and Sylvie are just strolling past, cutting to the front of the line. Okay, there's a couple of withering stares, but damn it, I want my unruly mob. We're doing this one my way. No one behind them sees this. What is in the water here? This must be the most placid group of people in the multiverse. Did the whole of Canada just move to this moon? How do it look? Like someone with a shit plan. Loki would be Sylvie at TV Sins. Has the train left all those people behind? Forgive me if this sounds naive, but surely in a global emergency like this, the goal is to evacuate as many people as possible. There's so much room left in this cart alone. Why is no one bothered by the end of the world? Are you sure she was your mother? Uh, no, she's not actually. I was adopted. Is that a bit of a spoiler for you? Sorry about that. No, I knew I was adopted. What? They told you. So, is Sylvie from an alternate timeline entirely, where she chooses to be a woman and barely remembers her mother? Or is she from an alternate dimension where everything is different? I don't care which turns out to be true, but why the secrecy? Surely I can't be expected to root for either of these mass murderers, whatever their origins. But she told me that one day I'd be able to do it too, because... because I could do anything. Parents who tell their kids this lie. Is there a lucky bow waiting for you at the end of this crusade? Movie has time for this. Or TV show acting as though it has the runtime of a movie has time for this. So, on the subject of love. It's never. Managed to maintain quite a serious long distance relationship with a postman whilst running across time. A postman? What does he just install posts for a living? Oh, she means a mailman. Oh, you silly Brits. What, he just delivers posts all day? Suppose next you're going to tell me he works at the post. Oh. Must have been would be princesses. Or perhaps another prince. A bit of both. I suspect the same as you. The way Loki's sexuality is revealed here with zero fanfare, just as if it's another part of his personality, is fantastic. Still a long way to go, but this is a start. You relax your way, and I'll relax mine. But why relax at all? Why not attempt to drain the power source for the train at least once before a nap? It is super nice of the apocalypse to leave the train track and power sources completely alone as they traverse towards their destiny. I am all for using headbands as weaponry, but really only as a backup plan to the sword. Well, we assume the sword works. We haven't seen it slay anyone so far. Also, there's no way Foki's horned tiara wouldn't snag part of this ridiculously knitted getup, let alone any of the pointy weapons used in this fight. Come to think of it, their uniform should be riddled with snags, runs, and the one wayward string that you can't help but pull. In fact, Unravel should be playing in the background as this knitted bullshirtery wheezes on. She punches a helmet. He punches a helmet. And really, what are helmets for anymore? Being thrown through a train window before your intended stop after drinking too much alcohol. Or predestination station defenestration post-intoxication, if you will. So does Loki's magic just make things invisible? I was expecting some sort of extra planar pocket dimension arrangement. But the tempad must still physically exist or it wouldn't have been destroyed by the fall. This also means Loki's daggers are currently, albeit invisibly, piercing any number of his internal organs. And God knows where he's been shoving the invisible tesseract all along. Oh, the mission. The mission. What, your glorious purpose? Uh, does anyone have the commercials for episode one? Yeah? Cool. Roll them. Did the, uh... Scream make you feel better? Loki survives this. What about the Ark? The Ark never leaves because it's destroyed. Whoa, Nelly. Let me just grab my temp pad. Where is everyone? The Ark. The evacuation vessel. Something like that would have enough juice to repower the temp pad. See, back at this lady's house, Sylvie doesn't seem to have a clue what the Ark is. So how does she now suddenly know its history and that it didn't make it off the planet? And if she did know about it, why didn't she take them there to start with? Looks like somebody caught a bout of the brain freeze. You know, I don't think I've ever walked this much in my life. I'm strolling on the moon. It's gonna blow up soon. What a glorious purpose. Oh my God, people, where is your urgency? You're about to be hit with a planet. You wanna know how enchantment works? 
I have to make physical contact and then grab hold of their mind. Oh. How does Loki not understand how enchantment works? Especially this Loki from 2012 who literally used this exact power or something extremely similar to control the minds of Hawkeye, Dr. Selvig, and half of Sahil just days earlier. I have to make physical contact and then grab hold of their mind. Which is incredibly confusing considering we don't always see Foki touch the person herself, but we have seen the enchanted person grab hold of her next victim and transfer mental ownership powers. So how does this work exactly? I've never actually walked for 10 minutes, but given the distance, I'm pretty confident if the arc is launching in that time, our pair of keys is f Because this is gonna suck. Do yourself a favor and believe Sylvie here because the next 10 minutes is just a whole lot of suck. Sure, it looks like a lot of things are happening, but believe me when I say that hiding in these spins, power walks, running, fighting, and ducking, nothing is actually happening. Okay, mister, that's a surefire way to get yourself expelled from the Rick on Stark school of running away from things. You've been warned. This is an apocalyptic event report of an airplane hijacking and bomb threat with zero fatalities, which doesn't seem all that apocalyptic, does it? Between one minute of previous Lee's, 35 seconds of Marvel logoing, 20 seconds of Loki title carding, and 4 minutes and 48 seconds of f***ing end credits, we're left with only 33 minutes of content. Some bastard is robbing me of over 7 minutes of Tom Hiddleston and I will not stand for it. Why do you think I blew up your condo? I remember. Sorry, half an hour ago I was a whitehead Scotsman. Oh, I know you did send me back to the future, but I'm back. I'm back from the future. Not so fast. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Dagger, dagger, dagger. You're in my way. You are my way. Oh, do you want better? Why is Gamora? I'm the doctor, by the way. What's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life. You're no travelers. You're the devil. Were you sent here by the devil? No good, sir. I'm on the level. Brute force is no substitute for diplomacy and guile. community. I'm thinking you want him independence. And I'm thinking you weren't burdened with an overabundance of schooling. 